Hmm, I've got a Raspberry Pi with ROS installed. I've got a robot that I want to build with ROS, but how do I get started? That's why we need to take a look at Turtle Sim, the hello world of robot simulation that's built into ROS. <laughs> Hello, my name is Sid Faber from the robotics team at Canonical. In this video, we're going to take a look at Turtle Sim. It's a really basic simulator that's included with ROS. Uh, it's used to teach some of the basic concepts about how ROS works. We'll soon discard it in favor of some more complex simulators that handle things like real world physics and collisions and so on. So think of this as our hello world case. That also makes it a great candidate for installing in a container. For this video, we'll generally be following the Turtle Sim tutorial off of index.ros.org. All you need to run this tutorial is an installation of ROS, including the graphical toolset. I'm going to be running ROS Foxy in a LexD container. This is the same container we created in an earlier video. All right, we'll begin by connecting to the ROS Foxy container. Since we've already set everything up and we've got an initial setup of ROS, it's just a matter of using APT to install the Turtle Sim simulator. ROS software is organized into packages. They contain the robot nodes, more about that later, configuration files, any required third party software, essentially whatever's needed to bundle together to create some standalone functionality. This is where the ROS2 package command helps out. We're interested in the Turtle Sim node executable. That's the simulator itself. Okay, now that we have the simulator up and running, what do we do with it? Let's start up another terminal session and use it to control the turtle. Turtle teleop key is the executable that lets us command the turtle with the keyboard. Looks like that's working. There's also a draw square executable. Let's try that one out. Hmm, now I wonder what happens when both the draw square and the teleop executables send command to the same turtle at the same time. Let's open up another terminal window and give it a shot. Well, that's kind of unexpected behavior. It's definitely something to keep in mind as we build out robots. Robots need to respond to the world around them, which is often unpredictable. That means fundamentally we need an event-driven programming model. Always need to make sure the robot can return itself to a stable and safe condition. All right, let's take a look at a few other commands. We can call a raw service to clear the playing field. We can also call a service to spawn a second turtle onto the playing field. Oh, and here's something a little bit different. How about we create a new container and then try to control the new turtle from the new container? So we'll do this by first making a copy of the running container using the LXC copy command. All right, now let's start the newly created container. Give it a second to let the network finish starting up. And then here you can see this is a different container. It has a different address on my robot network. But can I still use it to control the turtle in the first container? Let's connect to this new container and try it out. You'll see there's a few extra options in the ROS2 run command. These are used to map the control messages to the second turtle instead of the first. But yep, looks like we can send commands to our turtle simulator from another machine. So there you have it, a straightforward simulation of a robot within ROS. Uh, we're going to use this to understand some of the basic concepts within ROS, things like nodes, messages, topics, actions, things like that. More about that in our upcoming videos. Again, my name is Sid Faber from the robotics team at Canonical. Thanks a lot for watching.